they won't be they won't be able to give it to you if they're not saved. Born of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord tells us a lot of things to do. Now get Ephesians up, uh, six one, and He tells us a lot of things to do, but they got to be done His way. Right. <laughs> no, no, where did the highway come from, Sister? I hear him say it's God will the highway. <laughs> <laughs> I just know where he is. Where did the highway come from? <laughs> There's no highway. It's his way or no way. No way. But maybe people like to make jokes. I bet you don't, you don't, you don't need to joke about him. Joke, just tell you jokes about something else. Not, not God. Yeah, he said because the way we have to deal with him is what? In sincerity. And in truth. And truth. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. You got six months? Mm -hmm. Read 15 for Listen at this, y'all. And having shod your feet with the preparation of We the need to shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Go ahead, read. Read 16? Yes. I want you to go through 18. Above all, Taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all above the everything. <laughs> you need to have the shield of faith with you, so you can quench some of the fiery arrows that Satan gonna be shooting. At you. <coughs> mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. It's the word. The word can't do this, <laughs> right? He's talking to his people. We are the only ones can do this. Go ahead, read. And take the Salvation. And we need to put on the helmet of salvation, which is the what? Praying always with What did it say, Mother? Helmet of salvation is what? The sword. It's the word of God. Right here. Helmet of salvation. Go ahead. Praying always with all Always pray. And supplication in the spirit. Somebody to spell pray for me. This end P. Slow. P. People. Uh, Reaching uh, a uh, after why yeah why? that's what prayer is. We're always reaching out to God. He said, "Pray always." Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't say say one a day. Right. You need to go through the whole day praying. Twenty-four seven. Because you don't know what Amen. might happen. Twenty-four seven. Yeah, the people over there in California. Some of them walking down the street, okay. and the street okay. fell in. We don't know what's going to happen. Northern part of California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Yes. yes. So, this is what it's all about. Finish him up. Why? Why to the end with all the book, book, that word? Prayer and supplication. S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E. Perseverance. Oh, perseverance. That means to give up. I put all you got into it. Persevere. Mm -hmm. Got to make it to the to the to the finish line. To the finish line. Persevere. Hang in there. I know you're a little tired. Persevere. <laughs> Keep on going. Devil is a lie. We got to make it to the finish line. Go ahead. And supplication for all the saints. And this for all of the saints. We need this. So this is this is what he does for us. And that's why he allows us to get in here and 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 uh, get something out of it. Because everything is what? Sealed. Here it is. With the uh, Holy Spirit of promise. That's what it's sealed with. That's what the seal is. And anyone that doesn't have a right to go in there can't get nothing out of it. If they want to get it, they got to get saved. Mm -hmm. Come on. And that's why it's so important to ask someone. It's nothing wrong with you asking someone, are you saved? And that might be the beginning of a person getting saved. Because they're going to say no. And then it's your job to take them further into it. Tell them why you ask them that. What's, what's good about it? It's different things. The Spirit will lead you in what to say. He does everything. He's awesome. Amen.
So you can read John 16 sometime, and it'll give you a lot of feedback on the Holy Spirit. We need to know all we can know about what he does. I asked uh, uh, some uh, students the other day, who's running the church? They told me Jesus. Was that right? <coughs> no. Uh oh, somebody said no. No. <laughs> no. This is his church. He not running it. Who's running it? The Holy Spirit. Wow. That's why he sent them. Look while he's that. in heaven preparing the place for us. Look at that. Look who's running the church today. The Holy Spirit. Now, if you find somebody that tell you Jesus is running, they got a problem. What's their problem? They do error, not knowing the scripture. They are spiritually stuck. We ain't got no business getting like that. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. for you. Uh, huh? Yeah. He said, place. if I go, I'll come back and get you. He said, I'm coming back for you. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, See? Maybe he awesome. said, but I done gave you another comfort. And that's <laughs> what I'm right now. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the reason why you don't have to uh, uh, be concerned about people getting something out of script they ain't entitled to because it's sealed. Mm -hmm. And only them that belong to it can get something out of it. Amen. I was looking at a program the other day and a, a uh, female professor from, from uh, Yale was speaking on the TV and she said, Solomon had a thousand wives that he gave each one of them five minutes a day. I turned the TV on. <laughs> <laughs> why did you turn it off? Cause she lied. Okay. Five minutes a day doing what, talking? <laughs> How can you do that every it day? It couldn't have been too much effort. That's what she said on national TV. Mm -hmm. She said Solomon had a thousand wives. And the way that I got it, he must have gave each one of them five minutes a day. I turned TV. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to see it no more. Because she lied. Well, she, you think she didn't know any better? Yeah, I know she didn't know no better. Right, okay. And, and it's hard to give one woman five minutes, let alone a but thousand. She didn't say it was. She didn't say what it was. I knew what it was. Because of all the babies that those women had back then, what happened to them? They all got cremated. None of them children live. Mm. Why? Because those, those women worship a lot of different gods. And the way to worship their gods was through cremation. They gods were fire gods. Why do you think all the names of them gods is in the scripture? Oh, Molech, yeah. Yeah. Molech and Chemos and Asterisk and, 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 and look what name they got on Easter, uh, Esther. Her name is Esther, a female sex god. I said, oh my goodness. For Easter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why do you think it's a bunny and the egg? What they symbolize? Fertility. Yep. Sex. Ain't that right, Mother? Mm hmm. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's so awesome that the, that the scripture refers to thousands of gods. See? But what did Jesus say in Matthew 5, 4? I don't have to go to Exodus to see what Moses said about having other gods before him. Jesus said in Matthew 5. Serve the Lord your God only. Ooh. It means the same thing Moses said. Mm -hmm. So your Ten Commandments is in the New Testament. Don't be running back that Exodus trying to get nothing out of it. Why'd you say it like that? Right? Only because when you go in the Old Testament, you pass the resurrection, you pass the uh, crucifixion, and a veil goes over your eyes. Remember when Moses come down off the mountain, he had a veil over his face. Mm -hmm. The glory of the Lord was on him. So. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens where every time we go in the Old Testament, a veil goes over our heart. Mm -hmm. Then when you go back in the new, it comes off. You, you're back on the, we need to be on the right side of the resurrection, the right side of the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Y'all too quiet. 
Somebody don't understand. I know it. I can feel it. <laughs> but that's the importance of it. Because without, with the seal, it's a difficult book. They won't be able to get anything out of it. Okay. Where do we stop off at, John? No, that was Ephesians, right? Yeah, yeah what? Ephesians. Ephesians, yeah. No, no, no. Through with Ephesians. Okay. But before Ephesians. He was in all. 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 First Corinthians, right? Yeah, 14, okay. 14, 16. Now, uh, it, it's, it's, it's so beautiful about this uh, a difficult book. Like we said, you can study great philosophers with the natural mind and a diligent application. You can grasp the profound meanings of those philosophers. If the Holy Bible could be understood by natural man, it would only be a natural book. <coughs> you want me to read? No, oh, thank you. See? If natural man could understand it, it would be a natural, natural book to read. <coughs> but it's not natural. See? And by being a natural book, it wouldn't be the Word of God, because the Word of God is not natural. Everything God has, everything about Him is spiritual. What did John say? Born of the Spirit. Okay. Since it came from God and is spiritual, and before anyone could receive the teachings of it, it must be born of the Spirit. Let's take a look at it in John chapter 3. St. John, chapter 3. Get it, say amen. John chapter 3. Someone read verse 3 and 4. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And four said, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And he said, Except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. Into the kingdom of God. Not only can he not see it, he can't enter into it either. That's right. See? To be born but you and I are blessed. Because we can do it where others can't. And it lets them know <clears throat> that we have a job to do to get those people saved if we if the, the Lord see uh, uh, guide us into that way and we get the people saved that then they'll be able to see. They'll be able to go into the kingdom. They'll be able to see the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone else, the next two. Where you left off? Four. Okay. Um. Oh, we we'll read four. Okay. I read four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Five and six. Okay. So uh, Jesus answered, "Most assuredly, I say, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God." That's why we're baptized. Amen. Yep. Amen. Water and the Spirit. Mm-hmm. If you ever entertain that thought, here it is. Jesus says it has to be that way. Water in the spirit. Amen. See? Go ahead. He, uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. See? That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So is it possible flesh can turn into spirit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's only through God. If God is in the picture, it's impossible. Mm hmm. Flesh is always trying to do something. Look at Goliath, big as he was, <laughs> awesome as he was, strong as he was, tall as he was. I mean, he had everything natural going for him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. But it was just a little bitty 14 year old boy with five stones oh, in his hand. And one of them took him out the gate, didn't he? <laughs> so why did he need the other folks, Sister Finney? What need the other folks? Stone? David! Yes. Beloved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really know why, why he needed Can I tell you? Yeah. He had four more brothers. 
Keep what? Oh, okay. Goliath. Yeah. The they were called, called, called the sons from. of Gath. Okay. That was their dad. See? And he had four more brothers. So if they feel uh, uh, that they wanted to get in the contest too, <laughs> they could have took them yeah, out. Yeah, four more sons. Okay, so he was going to reach them to start. Oh, I know yeah. you had five brothers, but I, when you asked me about the star one. Yeah, one four, for each of his brothers brother. in case they can. Okay. <laughs> okay, so where we stopping? Uh, seven. Verse, somebody read seven day. Mom, not that I have said unto thee, ye must be born again. Hey, say the, the wind three. bloweth where yeah. he listeneth, and there yeah. heareth the sound thereof, but can cannot tell which it come, and whether it goeth. So is is everyone that is born of the spirit. See, he said, don't wonder why I said you must be born again. A lot of people be wondering why I got why I got to go that way. Cause he said it. Just do it. He yeah. said, "Don't wonder, marvel not." That means don't worry, don't wonder why I'm saying this. <laughs> Just do what it says. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. you must be born again. Then look, look what he said in verse eight: "The wind blows where it want to, and you hear it, Sound. huh?" You yeah, have a sound, but you can't tell where it's He said, but you can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going continually. See? And so it is with everyone who is born what? Of the Holy Spirit. If you say it, you are born of the Holy Spirit. Now you need to know that. Yep. See? Because for some reason, well, we know the enemy doing it. I don't even like calling his name. I just say enemy. But but he he he's trying to get people to think that uh, when you talk about the Trinity, you're dealing with uh, more than one God. Yep. See, even it's though we with the word Trinity is not in the scriptures, but the meaning of it is. Mm -hmm. And what is the meaning of it? More than one. One. Right? Right. Yeah. Trinity means what? Three. Three. Come on, y'all. We don't use the word Trinity, but we use three. Mm -hmm. So religion says they worshiping three gods. One plus one plus one. I said, no, they ain't. They worshiping one God. One times one times one. Mm -hmm. He's a God of multiplication. Come on, y'all. <laughs> huh? Of course. See? So is everyone who is born of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we are today. So because of that, uh, it's not enough just to be born of him. Go to... Uh, uh, but but she read it already in Ephesians 5 that we need to be filled with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? And in okay. your prayers when you get up in the morning, ask him to feel you. Mm -hmm. There's many feelings, say that. Yes. Yes. Many many feelings. And the word many can be millions. Yeah. It depends on how long we remain on this earth. But every day we need a feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Why did I say that? Bodies up, we keep vessels. Where's this scripture? It talks about our bodies are leaky vessels. Paul said it. Is it Hebrew? No. It'll come to me, and I'll let's see. But that's the reason why we need a feeling every day, because our bodies are leaky vessels. Yeah, we But he's got enough feelings. To last it's you and I forever. until <laughs> we leave this earth. Yes. It's enough. Feeling. Don't think it's going to run out. <laughs> He's got enough feelings to feel us every day, yeah. mother, mm -hmm. until we leave this earth. Right. He, 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 he doesn't run short or slack right. on nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Always approach. The Holy Bible prayerfully. 
You ain't got no business going in mad with somebody that I, I can't wait to get to them and I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. that, and other, so and so. Always. How long is always? Okay. That's your forever. Yeah, okay, God. Uh, so if, I'm, if I call myself angry, I don't need to get in the book. No, oh, how are you going to be angry and powerful at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> now I really I, I just said to be funny. What is prayerful? It means you put yourself in a humble submission. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can't be in a humble submission and angry at the same time. Oh right. Come on, yeah. <clears throat> there are many scriptures that say, "Humble yourself mm -hmm. under the hand, and mighty the hand of God." Yeah, and that's the way we need to be. So if I'm angry with something, uh, we need to practice humility. So if I'm angry with something, I need to pray. Then you need to pray. I, I, yeah, I need to pray. Pray. <laughs> yeah, I need to pray and get myself right here. And then, then come prayerfully into the book. Oh, okay, so I do. Okay. Yeah, don't try to come in there in that state right. because you won't get nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that will stop you from from really getting what you what need out of it. Yeah, and that's why that's the reason why he wants us to study. See? So, uh, what did I say? Always. That's every time you go in it. Mm -hmm. Approach the word of God prayerfully. prayerfully. Don't get your don't get chastisement from trying to go in there angry and tearing the pages up and there, mad at somebody. Else. Please don't. Mm -hmm. Because what do it say in Hebrew 12 and 6? In the meantime, we can't none of y'all quote it. Y'all doing so good with other things. <laughs> it <laughs> says, those who, those who love, the Lord chastised. love. Yeah, yeah, right. He chastised. Yeah. He chastised. He chastised. He chastised. You don't want to be chastised by him. If you couldn't stand a switch or a chain or a belt or whatever mama gets, you don't want what he got. <laughs> you don't want to be chastised by him. Because it's going to come through people, places, and things. Mm -hmm. He ain't whooping with no belt. It might be that next door neighbor hates your children. It might be the police on that give you a ticket every time you pass the car. You don't know who it is, but he deals with just time through people, places, and things. And things. I done been through. I'm a witness. And it's just a blessing that I'm alive today. Amen. Huh? Amen. Oh, he could have he could have let it went to the end, but he just wanted to teach me. And <laughs> I received it wholeheartedly. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, everybody I knew turned it back. Nobody wanted to be bothered with me. Nothing went right. Hmm. But the minute I prayed, told him I'm ready. He made everything back like it was. <coughs> he can do that. Yes. Oh yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Always approach it. Uh, prayerfully and be in the spirit. If you have to pray and get in the spirit before you go in the word, do that. But prayerfully approach the Bible in the spirit. See? And then the Holy Spirit will be your teacher and your guide to a better understanding of whatever you need out of his book. Because he wrote it. Did y'all know that? Yep. What can I find? Yeah. We learned that last week. I ain't talking to you now. <laughs> talking to Justin. I know he does. <laughs> but do you do any of you all know? Turn to First Peter, okay, okay. chapter one. First Peter. Uh, chapter one. And so, after today, all of you all will know who wrote it. Because most things you hear is about Paul. What Paul wrote. Or what Matthew wrote, right, right, or what right. so and so wrote. But you see, all of them did this under God. Mm -hmm. And 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 Peter is gonna gonna tell you right out how it happened. Do we have it? Mm -hmm. first, first Peter chapter two. What did I say? One? Yeah. So first Peter chapter two. It's in Second Peter chapter one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Second, you know, Peter, second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Second, second Peter chapter one. Second. And the subtitle of this chapter is A More Sure Word of Prophecy. It means a word that you can lay your life on. 
Mm -hmm. It means a word that, that, that you can trust in it to the utmost. It means a word that whatever you can do, this word won't let you down. Look what it says in verses uh, 18 and 19. Somebody read. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Holy mountain. Go ahead. And so we have the prophecy. Prophecy. Word confirmed with you do well do well to to hear as a light that shines in a dark place and the day dawns and the morning star rise in your heart. Now you know what? It's a lot in here. And you won't be able to just understand it just reading through it, Joe. You got to break it down because you always are, uh, are babes in Christ. And you really got to get the, uh, let the Spirit give you the general understanding out of this verse because there's so much in it. He says up here, we have a more sure word of prophecy, a word you can lay your life on, a word that won't never let you down, a word that comes from Almighty God. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's a more sure word. <laughs> you ain't got to bet on it. It's, it say what it mean and mean what it say. Look, that you do well to take heed, just like a light that continually shines in a dark place. That light ain't gonna fail. It's gonna do exactly what it was made to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna light the place up. See? Look at this. Until the day dawn, get up in the morning, and the day star rises in your heart. The day star is Jesus. <coughs> and the morning star shall rise in your heart. 